Hello and welcome to Season 3 of the Racing with Rob and Roller podcast. Can't believe we're on Season 3 already. This is awesome and amazing. Season 3! Woo! I'm Josh Roller, and you just heard the other guy who makes up the other half of this podcast, Rob Peters. Uh, We are excited for 2021, and we hope you are off to a great year itself for you as well. And, uh... We'd like to, first off here, before we get started, give out a huge shout out to Colin Safronsky for creating our logo for this podcast. Uh, super excited. I've been working with him for, um, let's see, a little over a month now, pushing a month and a half, shooting stuff back and forth between Rob and, and, and him and ideas, and we settled on this logo. Super excited. He's created thumbnails as well as... Um, for our YouTube, we'll discuss our more uh, social media presence as well this year. We're boosting that up. Uh, he's creating more stuff for us uh, in the coming weeks as well. So thank you, Colin. We'll share another uh, uh, his link to his portfolio once again. But we I could not start this podcast without giving him a huge shout out. So thank you, Colin, once again. Rob, are you ready for uh, season three? I think I'm ready for season three. We got a brand new logo on the show now. I, I'm sure if you've seen it now, you've. Uh seen the brand new logo you're looking at it right now on your phone i assume um and if you're not you're listening to us on your computer you've still seen it you've seen our new twitter logo i hope so uh, unless you're you have no social media presence and you just get your news strictly about this podcast from whatever feed you get your podcast from like the rss feed or something um yeah. i'm pretty sure you're excited i, I hope you're excited as excited as we are cuz we're super excited to essentially double what we've put out the last couple of years uh we're going into season three we've got a whole lot of things looking forward to us and we've got a 2021 racing season that is shaping up to be one of the best that we've seen in quite some time so i am very excited about it um and josh do you think it's time we should uh, jump right into uh the rob's racing report and catch up on all of the news that we've missed for like a month you have an extensive rob's racing report so yeah we got all the usual stuff for you coming up here we'll preview daytona but first rob yes you need to get going with rob's race yeah this is like five weeks this is five weeks worth of news that we've got Mm -hmm. to cover in in one podcast so wish me luck so let's go ahead and jump in starting with formula one as we usually do uh formula one confirmed that both friday practice sessions have been reduced from 90 minutes to 60 minutes in 2021 race start times have also been changed to the top of the hour instead of the 10 minutes past i dig that i like that not so sure if i'm happy about Friday practice sessions getting having reduced time, but I'll get into that later. Uh, Monaco Grand Prix organizers remain adamant that this year's race will take place despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, and F1 also has a brand new CEO in Stefano Domenicali, the former uh, Ferrari CEO, Ferrari uh, team team principal that I'm sure, team leader that you're, I'm sure many of you remember. I don't know if we talked about that, but that's something that has happened, but he has officially ruled out the idea of reverse grids in formula one events but it is still possible to see saturday sprint races this season how about that that would be uh that'd be crazy i don't know if i like that without reverse grid though i i I agree i'd like to see it with reverse grid it'd be because what what, what's the difference i mean the difference between the saturday race and the sunday race wouldn't be anything different like the thing that makes it cool in most other forms of racing is you have some kind of inversion you have some you have something that dictates it being a different race than the one you just saw previously so i feel like they would need to do reverse grids if they're going to do sprint races i agree but i i don't know uh, i don't want to get into too much of that right now um one of dominicali's major focuses is also expanding formula one's presence in the united states started stating that finding a deal for a new F1 race in Miami is still on and talks with Circuit of the Americas for a renewal is ongoing. I beat the horse that uh, F1 should come back to Indianapolis. Roger Penske wants to make it happen, but uh, there's been no movement on that. So I'm uh, not ready no to move, call. No movement, at least publicly. We all know Roger is really good at doing stuff and keeping it quiet. I'm not ready to call the possibility dead in the water just yet because I want to hold out hope. but. It's not looking good. Oh, and by the way, this morning, uh, it, it, we're recording this on uh, February 8th. It's by probably February 9th by the time you're listening to this. Uh, but Lewis Hamilton has signed a one-year deal with Mercedes. We expected this to happen. We just didn't know when. Yeah. And thankfully, it finally happened. I was get, I was starting to get worried. I was like, the season is starting soon. <laughs> like, it's 2021. I 
think he should probably have a, a deal set up yet. When he didn't have one in January, I was like, okay. But now yeah, he's finally had one. So I was nervous. I was nervous, man. I was yeah. like, man, what is Mercedes going to do? Who are they going to do off the I, – I don't know. I didn't I didn't know what they were going to do. But all right, Hamilton's back into Mercedes. Um, that's it for like Formula 1. And relief and a lot of people disappointed. Yeah, I don't know uh, who thought anything different was going to happen. I think we all knew Hamilton was going to resign. It was just a matter of when and for how long. <laughs> so those were the two big questions that were on on the table, and now we know both of the answers. Um, some feeder series news. Hey, this is the best news of the year. I, I don't know if you've I, heard this, but this is best I news did. so far of 2021. Uh, American Juan Manuel Correa will make his return to racing after his accident at Spa in 2019 that also tragically took the life of Antoine Hubert. Uh, and he will be racing in Formula 3 with ART. So this is great news for Juan Manuel Correa making his return to racing after breaking both of his legs in that horrifying accident two right. years ago. Um, and, and now he's coming back. But it's not going to be in Formula 2. It's going to be in Formula 3. But I think that's just fine because the up three field is, is just good enough that I think Juan Manuel Correa can uh, gain some of his mojo back and maybe get to F2 again in, in a little while. Um, Dams has a totally new uh, F2 uh, lineup. They have signed Roy Nassani and Marcus Armstrong. So Sean Galeo and Dan Tictum are gone. Roy Nassani and Marcus Armstrong are now uh, the dam's drivers for next year. Um, Formula 2 news continuing with Theo Pulcher, uh, the F3 phenom that, you know, had a shot to win the champion. Who didn't have a shot to win that championship? Um, but uh, he's going to move to uh, ART in Formula 2 which is good news for him. Theo Pacher, if you haven't watched him in Formula 3, he's a good talent. He'll be fun to watch. Um, and then how about this? I talked about this. This is something I feel like I need to maybe go a little bit more in depth about. But uh, HWA Race Lab have, has announced their Formula 2 drivers for 2021. The first one being Matteo Nanini. Surprising, but, you know, not unheard of. You know, Nanini didn't really impress me in Formula 3, but he didn't really have a good team or a good car. So maybe he will pr- impress me in Formula 2. But the next guy, his teammate, is what you really got to focus on. Is uh, it's it's Alessio Deletta. Have you guys heard of Alessio Deletta? This guy is is the only person I know who's got, he's been the last two seasons in Formula Three. He has not scored a single point. Has not scored a single point. Uh, and he didn't score at all in, in in most of his feeder series. I think he scored a total of what sixty some career points in his entire career. Uh, that spanned from two thousand eight to now. Um, and he's run full seasons and just about everything, every feeder series leading up to Formula 2. Uh, trying to figure out the logic behind this one. This guy's never posted a points finish, points paying finish. It has to be money. I know, Josh, you're, you're, you're making the money sign. And, and it's not a reference to Johnny Menzel. It's, it's legitimately, I know, who thought you would hear that? Helping season three, I just made a reference to Johnny Menzel, a name you have not heard in years. Um, <laughs> Especially if you're not uh, an American football fan. You have no idea who this guy is. Uh, There's probably tons and tons of videos about him on the internet you can look up. But anyway, Uh, point is, so I think Deletta has to be here by money. But I think also there's a a point where I understand why people take pay drivers. But most pay drivers, for the most part, show potential at least once in their career. Deletta has never shown potential once. Like he is, he, we know what he's about. Like we've seen what he's about. We know this guy can run, you know, at the back of the grid every race. Maybe he won't crash. It's just, he's going to finish the race, I guess. He might be three laps down, but he'll finish. He's bringing you know, the car it, home in one piece. I, I, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is what we're getting. In for him. We're so excited about the F two field for next year and then it's like hwa goes and be like deletta why why would you do this to us why do you just bring he single-handedly brings down the level of skill in the field to lower than what it already is i'm sorry I, i'm sorry look i look at the stats look at the way he drives and tell me i'm wrong that's what i'm saying that's what i'm, that's what I'm asking um the greatest name in auto racing stingray rob will contest the 2021 indie light season with yunkos racing Shout out to Yunko's Racing. They follow me on Twitter, so I always like to give them a shout out. I wrote a cool story about him in my blog once, uh, and they shared it to their millions of followers, and not millions, thousands of followers. But And that was really cool. That was cool for me, so I appreciate them for that. Um, American driver Jack Crawford will dra- graduate to Formula 3, and he will join High Tech Grand Prix for 2021. Jack Crawford is great. If you haven't seen him in Formula 4, Italian F4, he's been doing really, really well. Um, he ran a couple of uh, F- F4 regionals. 
um, America, F4 American races last year uh, or two years ago, I think. Uh, he's just been doing really well. So it's good to see him move up to F3. Um, very well deserved. Hopefully we'll get a another I, I, high tech's not bad. High tech's pretty good. So we'll we'll see. Maybe uh, Jack Crawford. I don't I don't know if he's going to do as well as Logan Sargent did last year because Sargent had the Prema, uh, and it just seems like unless you're in a Prema, you're not going to win in Formula Three. So we'll see. Um, Yuri Vips and Liam Lawson will race for High Tech Grand Prix uh, in at Formula Three in Formula Two in 2021. So Yuri Vips moving up to Formula Two, which is awesome. That's what most I've wanted for a while. I've seen Yuri Vips race and he did very well in the races for dams last year. So I'm very happy to see that. And Liam Lawson moving over to high tech. Now I want, I, I didn't want to say this, but I think I missed a piece of news here that I want to talk about. And it regarded, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I'm going to look for it right now because, uh, there was, some rumors going on about what Gianluca Petikoff was doing um, this upcoming season, and uh, he uh, was is the reigning uh, Formula Regional European champion. Uh, champion, uh, and there was some rumors of what he was doing. He didn't know what he was doing uh, this next season. He was he had some offers here and there, but he wasn't quite sure what he was going to be do. This is true. Okay, so this happened. This did break today, uh, the eighth of February. Uh, he's joining Campos Racing in F2. He's going. He's skipping F3 entirely. He's going straight to Formula 2. This is cool because I don't think anybody saw this happening. I expected him. I said I said a long time ago, Petikoff should have been in the Prema uh, F3 seat. It, it went to Leclerc. This is cool, though. Him going to Campos for F2. Now, Campos is not the best Formula 2 team in the world. But I really think Petikoff can do well with, with these guys. We'll see what happens. Um, and also some sad news about uh, uh, Campos Racing. Their actual, they're the founder, Adrian Campos, uh, passed away over the past couple of weeks. Um, passed away a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and we, I want to send my uh, thoughts and prayers out to Campos Racing and all of the feeder series uh, paddock because that's, that's just sad. He has helped a lot of Formula One drivers, current Formula One drivers, uh, former Formula One drivers, uh, former feeder series drivers get uh, opportunities like this, and like you're seeing with Petikoff right now, someone who probably would not have had an opportunity to further his racing career, but Campos comes around and gives him an opportunity to and says, "Hey, go race in F2. We think you're good enough, and I think that's great because it, it, it's a, it's good to see that feeder series is working out, and we are uh, advancing the team, the drivers that need it." Um, so finishing up, that's the end of feeder series news for today. Moving on into IndyCar news. We got a lot of IndyCar news because holy cow, it felt like IndyCar, the whole IndyCar paddock broke, broke the internet three or four times. James Hinchcliffe is returning full-time IndyCar driver Ooh. in 2021. Um, he's, re- he's going to pilot 29 car with sponsor for, sponsorship from Genesis. So he's going to fo- uh, pair up with Colton Herta, Alexander Rossi, and Ryan hunter Ray. Now notice there's one driver that's missing from that entry lineup. And that's Michael, Marco Andretti. I'm sure if you haven't heard by now, Marco Andretti announced on social media that he will only race the Indianapolis 500 in 2021. So he's stepping away from IndyCar for a little bit. He's taking some time off. He's going to reevaluate his career and see what happens. And I believe uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but he um, is going to become a racer in SRX. And I know that he has some, or he's looking at uh, potentially some sports car rides here in the yeah. next couple of uh couple of months so we'll see what happens maybe that'll help marco maybe yeah, that'll, that's, that's what he needs to reunite his, re, uh, reinvent his career because definitely the poll at indianapolis was the most success he's had in five six seven years maybe i think yeah yeah definitely it, it, yeah it, yeah that's been a tough one to watch over the past few years so yeah take a step back regroup take a breather run a few different things maybe learn a thing or two you know or relearn i don't know and hopefully he comes back and we can see him back in a full-time ride and, and be more competitive and get the Andretti name back in victory lane. You know, and that's the thing that's crazy about Marco is I remember being a kid before Marco got to IndyCar. Cause I mean, his first 500 was my first 500, but um, on that terrible God awful weekend of the 2005 U S Grand Prix, there was also an Indy lights race and an Indy pro race on the road course that year. And that was the first time I saw Marco Andretti race was in that race, was in the Liberty Challenge. Um, that's what they called it at the time, the Liberty Challenge. Yeah. Um, and and that, 
and ever since that, everybody was hyping up Marco as being the next big thing. And then I see him go finish second in Indianapolis. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe he is the next big thing. And he won, then he won that race at Sonoma. And that's pretty much been it. I mean, his yeah. highlights have been top fives in Indianapolis and a win at Iowa. And then a whole bunch of other, not nothing. It's just nothing. It's, mm-hmm. it's kind of sad to see because there was possibilities there for a long time. Uh, moving on here. Uh, this is cool. This is the coolest thing I think we yes. I read most of this. It had entry designed to showcase women ra- women racers. A joint effort between Team Penske and Beth Beretta will provide an entry for Sonoma, Simona De Silvestro uh, in the in in twenty in, in the Indy five hundred. I think right or is it yes. supposed to be just the Indy five hundred? I think it is. Okay, so just the Indy five hundred for this year. Hoping to go full time next year with Peretta Autosport. They'll enter the number sixteen Chevrolet. Um, and they hope to turn it into a regular presence. Now, this is interesting because I'm not saying I don't want to throw like I don't want to say this is not possible, but it's like they tried this before. I was there in 2015 when they announced Grace Autosport was going to run. The I do remember that. 1500. I have the press release still in my backpack from that. I don't know why I haven't taken it out, but I still have the press release for some reason. Um, Beth Pareto was involved in that, too. I'm just saying she doesn't have the best track record. I hope this works out because the Lord, I, I, everybody knows, every most people in IndyCar, most IndyCar fans love Simona Di Silvestro. I love Simona Di Silvestro. I think she's a great talent. She's a great ambassador for women in racing. She's a great ambassador for wi- racing in general. Um, and she's done a lot of things. She's raced in supercars. She's done IndyCar. She's done. Uh, she's a factory driver now. For who are who's she factory drivers? Is it? It's not Porsche. No. Uh, is it? It might be Porsche. I can't remember. But she's a factory driver is my point. Uh, so she's very talented. She has talent. She's got Formula E starts to her to her credit. I forgot about that. Um, and, and so it, I want this to happen. It's just you can imagine my skepticism considering the fact that I've seen this before. You I know, think- and this is not – this is just like – this is it with uh, NY Racing Team and NASCAR. You know, it's like, okay, we've seen this before. You announce these things. You announce these cars. You announce these drivers, and then you don't show up on, the, on race day. You know, that's the problem. You announce all this, and then you don't show up. I'm really hoping that this pans through, and I assume with help from Team Penske and Roger Penske that this probably will get off the ground much better than Grace Autosport did. But you can imagine my skepticism. Not saying I don't want it to happen. I do want it to happen, but yeah. – I'm nervous. I think I'm nervous. Peretta was was involved in something Dodge related, and now I, it escaped me of what it was. And I, and I feel like there's a championship of, involved in that one. But also, yeah, the backing from Team Penske's it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. You know, yeah. Penske's not going to announce this and then not follow through. It's not right. the captain's way. And back when Grace Autosport was announced, it didn't. I had skepticism because, like, I don't remember a sponsor being. Yeah, announced. they had the driver. They had Catherine yeah. Leg there. Yeah, they, they brought didn't... in this was that was a crazy part. They brought in Peretta and they brought in Catherine Leg, and that was basically it. And he was like, yeah. "Okay, we have a driver, and that's it." And I was like, "Okay, do you have a rolling chassis? Do you have a do you have the finances in place to get yeah. sponsors? Do you have a, a a shop to work out of? You know, do you have all of these things to make this going?" Not at the time. I think they said they didn't have anything at the time, and I was like. Yeah, okay, so you're supposed to run next year, and you have a driver, and that's it. Yeah. You've signed your driver. That's, that's it. Okay. I was like, okay, I nothing, nothing against Catherine. She's a good driver, but yeah, that's she, it. it'll be different uh, this time around. I expect to see them on the in the garage fighting for a position in May. I mean, I'd like to see Catherine Leg come back, but I'm happier about Simona coming back. Simona's Leg, Leg has, has kind of had her time in, in open wheel, and I think she's having a good time running sports cars now, and I like watching her in sports cars. But Simona's still got fight in her to, to run Indianapolis, and I think that's – I'm just happy about to see that. Uh, and then how about this? This is how about this. Rick Ware Racing is replacing Team Go as the co-entrant of Dale Coyne Racing in 2021. The team will field the number 51 Honda on a full-time basis with Roman Grosjean running 13 road and street course races for Dale Coyne Racing with the Rick Ware Racing in the number 51 Honda. Sponsors will be al- announced, la- announced later. Rick Ware Racing also will field the number 52 on a part-time basis. So Rick Ware, let's get this. I, I want to uh, put things into perspective. Rick Ware has four NASCAR cars. I believe four charters, if I'm wrong. Maybe three. I can't remember. 
I think they have three charters. Well, yeah, I think, okay, he's got I'll three charters. I'll look it up for you right now. I'll look it up. You look up on. for me. This guy ran two cars, two uh, prototypes in the 24 Hours of Daytona last week. One with Austin Dillon for some reason, who, by the way, went the wrong way on the racetrack during practice, which was fun. Um, I don't know if you saw that. If any, Josh, did you see that Austin doing the wrong way in Rolex I did. 24? Pro- okay. Um, and then, so they didn't do much. But and now they're expanding into IndyCar. Now they're expanding into IndyCar. So I do not know how much money Rick Ware has. But at some point, I've got to wonder how much money is this guy making to break even and continue to field just dog crap cars? I, I, I mean, I don't think his IndyCar rides are going to be that bad because Dale Coyne is usually pretty good with IndyCar cars. So I think Rojan will have a better chance. But <laughs> this is just crazy. Okay, so he has four charters, but one of them is the Petty Ware Racing Charter that Petty jointly owns. So he's with- leasing a charter or co-owns it's a charter. jointly owned, but they take take it. It's one of those weird things. Like, like, like even if you go like the Wikipedia, it lists it under Petty Ware Racing, and that and that one is listed as the fifty one car. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's how Bob Pockers put it once. But yes, they have th- four charters. One of them is the joint charter with with Richard Petty Motorsports. This man is running four chartered NASCAR Cup cars, an Indy car and a half, and some prototypes. And I'll be damned if this guy's ever going to get any of them to finish in the top twenty. Well, that old Ross Chastain did last year at Daytona. Okay, no, no outside of a super a speedway game. race. Was that a premium car or was that a? Was I was a prior car for Rick Ware. It was before Rick yeah, Ware. I was gonna say, oh man. Okay, and then how about this? So, so we got the Rick Ware, and, and then this is a weird. So then, uh, Santino Ferrucci went to NASCAR, right? So he's not even doing IndyCar. Ed Jones is replacing Shot. him at Coin. So something must have happened with Ferrucci sponsors. Not going to speculate. Like to think and think only think. This is my thought. It is based in no fact, and I pref- preface that with this no fact. I like to think that sponsors decided, when are you ever going to re- apologize for 2018? Never? Okay, bye. But that's not what's, what really happened. Um, and then Ferrari has officially left the conversation of joining IndyCar as an engine just supplier. So that's all. Disappointing. Eh, it's not like I I knew it wasn't going to happen. I yeah, knew I knew it was, it was a, happen. High, a high a- ask. But when you have the budget cut, and I like I didn't I didn't understand like we're going to concentrate our efforts on for on Ferrari F one team like well you can only throw so much money at it right yeah. you can concentrate all the effort you want but you can only throw much throw much so much money at it why not spend it somewhere else and um, IndyCar just seemed like a great spot for it and they, I think they're going to have a leg up on it with the new engine package too but then eh, well, you know okay with the new engine package I'm sure but hey I'm there's a lot of people I'd like to see join the IndyCar fray again. I'd like to see Toyota back. I'd like yeah, to see Mercedes that. back. None of that's ever going to happen. But, you know, hey, I can dream. Um, a lot of people, everybody and their mom wants Ford Mercedes Cosway they back. The same budget cap that Ferrari's got in F1, just saying. Uh, exactly. Uh, so, anyway, uh, moving on here to SRX Racing. The full, X, the full six-race schedule was announced in early January. The inaugural season will begin on June 12th at Stafford, followed by a race at Knoxville on June 19th, Eldora on June 26th, Lucas Oil Raceway on July 3rd, Slinger Raceway on July 10th, and will conclude at Nashville Fairgrounds on July 17th. So a pretty good schedule. Again, those will be on CBS Sports Network. Um, And if it ever happens, Formula E is moving to CBS Sports Network, in case you forgot about that. Um, Marco Andretti, as we already said, is going to be joining SRX. Now, for some broadcasting news, uh, this is crazy. This broke earlier. NBC announced that it will be shuttering its cable network, NBCSN, at the end of 2021. This affects their coverage of NASCAR, IndyCar, and IMSA, also hockey, rugby, Olympic sports, the Tour de France, and a bunch of others. Um, NBC confirmed that coverage of NASCAR races will begin a migration to USA Network and not on the NBC broadcast network this season. When IndyCar and IMSA are not on their big uh, network, the potential holds for them is to be aired on Peacock, which would be really rough. You can't, you can't 
You can't put IndyCar and IMSA races on Peacock. And expect That's to maintain not, your level of growth. Yes, you can't. IndyCar and IMSA should not allow for that. Yes. NASCAR and IndyCar should be looking straight at NBCSN and say, that's not okay. This is not okay. We cannot be relegated to Peacock. It's one thing It's one thing to put this stuff, you know, I mean, we're talking about stuff that's pretty low in demand, usually gets shoved on ESPN Plus and in all of these streaming services. Right. Except for, like, UEFA Champions League, which is for some reason on CBS All Access, and it's the stupidest thing in the world. Um, but anyway, uh, usually you put lesser desired or soccer – leagues or stuff that needs to be aired and doesn't have like a bunch of broadcast windows you need a bunch of broadcast windows you know like basketball games tournaments like that hockey i would put under that uh, under that as well i think it, it would work out better to put hockey on peacock than it would to put motorsports on peacock because what you're doing here is you're essentially alienating a whole large group there's a lot of people in sports cars and in indy car fans right now that have no idea what peacock is or how to use it and I mean, you are going to be alienating. It's not that easy to use. I'm sorry. I can't. It's not on. It's not on Amazon Fire TV. I have a Fire TV, and Peacock is not on Fire TV. I have a Roku that's too old to get Peacock. I have to buy a whole new Roku if I want to get. Yeah, you have to account. get it on. You have to get it on your phone. You have. You'd that's have the to only way on. I can do it. I have it on my phone, and I try yeah. and airdrop it or cast it to my TV, and because it's a Fire TV, it won't let me play it, which is stupid. But the thing is. They have to first of all, they have to get Peacock on Fire TV devices because that's the number one thing that's bothering me right now. But second of all, Peacock is not going to work if you keep sh- if you force people to get it. Like I understand they're trying to force people to get it. They've done this with The Office. Like and I, hey, and by the way, The Office I, off. Yeah, go for that, it. yeah, go for it. Well, I was just going to say like that's just a point in itself. They hyped that up, and I think they've undelivered on The Office. So when you already have people. The office people who have bad mouth Peacock doing that, they're not off to a great start, you yeah, know, in no 2021. And now you have this movement, which I believe began last year. And I'm sure COVID only expedited this move. All right. Thank well, you. COVID. Mean, yeah. So you, you got to make it more user friendly. I don't like some of the features and how many buttons I have to hit. If you, it's like they're afraid to model it after how easy or after how easy Netflix is to use. Okay, uh, Rob, I forget. Do you have Netflix? I have Netflix. I just don't use it. Okay, Netflix is super easy to me to use. Hulu is a little bit more complicated to use, but then Hulu when you get, has the worst user interface I've ever. I, I think it's better than Peacock. I won't. My lie. favorite have, is HBO I have, Max. I have uh, Hulu on my tablet and then my television. It is easier to use than Peacock. My favorite and is HBO Max still because it, know, everything is arranged by genre and in alphabetical order. That's my yeah. favorite thing. You can get to anything. You could search genre or you could go – they have all the like – if you're just looking for like adult swim shows, you could click on that and it will show you every adult swim show they have. You just look for Cartoon Network shows. It'll show you – Turner Classic Movies. You want to watch all of the Turner Classic Movies archive, you click on that. It gives you every single one that you have. I love that. Sorry, I, I love that part about HBO Max. I will hype up HBO Max as being better than Netflix till I die, but that's a different yeah. story. We're talking about Peacock, <laughs> Xbox. I have to actually – I have to turn on my Xbox and pull up Peacock in order to watch it, which is really annoying. Um, it's, it's inconvenient. It's not annoying. It's just inconvenient. But I just think this is really concerning for me because – but even then, too, Peacock, if you've ever used it, it has these live, like these live stream channels, mm-hmm. and I like that. I think that's what they should use. That's what they should utilize, especially when it's this is because a lot of that is free, and you could put those channels you know, in integrate – like the reason why I use Fire TV, and I'm sorry I don't want to get too far on a, on a rant about this, but the reason why I use Fire TV is because Fire TV has a live guide function. And what it does is it takes all of your subscribed content from like YouTube TV, from Philo, uh, Pluto TV, what have you, like any live streaming service, and it puts it all into one convenient guide. And you can favorite everything and put it all together and d- organize it how you like it. And that's what I love. Now, if Peacock comes to Fire TV, you're going to have to integrate that uh, into the live. You're going to have to integrate those live t- TV streams into the live guide. You do that, 
there's this NBC Sports channel that's on there that airs Dan Patrick and some reruns of like other shows. I miss watching Dan Patrick. If that happened, I would watch Dan Patrick a lot more again. Um, but that is something also that I would I would say do that instead. You know, put like IndyCar and IMSA not necessarily behind a paywall, but like put them kind of for free, I guess, out to people who have an internet TV. You know, you say, okay, well, you can watch it with Peacock uh, on on the NBC Sports Channel. You know what I mean? That's that's can- something. Yeah. Not saying it's going to happen, but it'd be cool. You can't ask people also to pay more unless, you know, That's the goal true. pass, the goal pass thing. Here's the thing that worries me. And then I, and then this is my last sense I'll, I'll say here is that when on the release that they said they're moving it to Peacock and it can be used for the premium edition. Mm-hmm. What about premium plus, which I have, cause I don't like to watch ads. I will pay the extra $5 to not okay. have ads. Okay. So you paid the extra five dollars because I only got the regular premium. I don't. That's all I, I was going to deal with. Yeah, I don't deal with ads. Netflix spoiled me and ruined that for everyone. Okay, I will. Pay I have the- no problems with ads. I, Everybody I, hates ads except me. I don't like ads in the beginning. I don't like them in the middle. Okay, that's it. that's what I'm going to say about that. So, what about that version? I get like I know ads. Well, there's ads are in live TV. Well, no, duh, it's live TV. Okay, I, I understand that. And if you're too stupid to comprehend that as a consumer. It's literally how TV is paid for is by ads. Yeah, so you're watching something live, but if I'm watching a, re- a recording of it or, like, I'm watching The Office, yeah, I don't want to watch ads. But if I'm watching the Indie GP in May live, I understand I'm going to be watching ads because it's live and I'm getting the TV feed or however they do it. Like, like, yeah. like when I watch the 519 on the app, it was weird because I get the same three commercials each commercial break, and then I was like in a dead space. Like your your program will resume shortly for like a minute and a half while the actual ads were playing. Okay, so like instead of showing showing like the wild feed or whatever, like you know you go on YouTube or something, you, raw feeds or whatever, you know, and you hear what the announcers are saying in the commercial break and stuff like that. Instead of doing that, you just get a blank screen. Well, you get like a free, you or get like free, a, a, commercial. a splash screen. Yeah, you get you get the same thing. commercials, and then you get like this thumbnail for a minute and a half. IndyCar logo, NDT, IndyCar logo, yeah. whatever. Your programming will resume shortly. It's dead air. There's nothing playing on, and then when the TV feed comes back, then that's when your feed comes back. I think the only thing that I like about I'm happy that NBC is moving gold content onto Peacock because it's just cheaper in general. Like gold was ridiculous. I just could not afford it. You had to buy it yearly. And unless you had that money to shell out right away, I mean, it was it was just not possible. Like for 50, I think I, I think I paid like fifty some dollars or whatever for that. Yeah, yeah. It's about as much as a new video game. Like, no, if, I I have bills to pay. Like, I can't just pay fifty dollars to watch IndyCar practice. You know, be putting on Peacock, put practice qualifying and stuff like that on Peacock. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. That's more of an incentive for me. Um, but golly, I just can't imagine having to pay for peacock to watch full races yeah. when you should be able i mean what why is we, we've seen an indy car race on usa before why can't if you're gonna put a bunch that of stuff on usa that, what's wrong with that that's the thing that confuses me a lot it, which is to me like and this is my last point and before you know I'll let you say thing before we move on usa network doesn't sound as as fancy even as the fictitious and fantasy world of nbc2 just saying rename it i don't like NASCAR and USA, IndyCon USA doesn't feel right. It feels patriotic, but it doesn't feel right in a sports sense. USA should reboot Duckman. Who? That's all I'm going to say about that. They should reboot Duckman. Great, okay. great show. Great animated cartoon. Starred Jason Alexander as a duck playing a private eye. It's pretty, pretty funny. Pretty nihilistic. Like, like 90s Rick and Morty nihilism. Okay. Okay, NASCAR time because we're 30 minutes in. Holy cow. Ty Dillon's making the move to Toyota, at least on a partial basis. He's going to pilot Gaunt Brothers Racing Toyota in their joint attempt to make the Daytona 500. And uh, Dillon will drive for 2311 Racing in the Bush Clash tomorrow to give them practice, or today or whatever, whenever you're listening to it. Or probably you're listening to this on Friday or something, and he's already ran the Bush Clash, and you already know what happened, whatever. But uh, Dillon is going gonna, is gonna to run uh, also in the Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing in the 54. Uh, at Daytona, Homestead, Las Vegas, and Talladega. Um, Love's Travel Center uh, are going back with Michael McDowell, so we get to see Lord knows how many more years of mediocrity out of Michael McDowell. 
Um, Kyle Larson will be sponsored by a Hendrick branded company, Nations Guard, in the season's first three races at Daytona, Daytona Road Course, and Homestead. Existing Hendrick partners, Freightliner and Cincinnati Inc., have joined the number five team of Larson and will sponsor two to be determined races each. And I also saw earlier today, too, that he's running a Ricky Hendrick throwback for HendrickCars.com. Is that? Did you call that? Yeah, the same car that uh, William Byron ran. The few races last year, I believe, mm-hmm. because Hertz had to drop out. Uh, the same car. It's a Ricky. It's a, yeah. It's a Ricky Hendrick throwback to the GMC GMAC cars. I like. There's gonna I'm be a Hendrick fan. Cars. Um, com. All right, Justin Marks Trackhouse Race yeah. Team has made multiple new points recently. The team announced that iFly, Comsco, Pump It Up Party, and K1 Speed are sponsors for the 2021 season. And more recently, how about this? Grammy Award winning singer Pitbull has become co owner of Trackhouse Racing. I guess he just decided to buy into that. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, co-owner of JTG Doherty awesome. Racing, Brad Doherty, confirmed to Bob Pockeris that the uh, number 37 team of Ryan Priest will operate as an open team in 2021 as the charger that it had in previous seasons is now controlled by Spire Motorsports. The team currently has funding for 24 races, but will run the full season only if f- funding is found. So that is yikes on that front. Thor Sport Racing announced randomly that yeah. they will operate under Toyota, the Toyota umbrella. And I say this randomly because I am sad about what I'm about to say here. Uh, that Matt Crafton, Johnny Sauter, and Ben Rhodes will return to the team in full-time capacities. No issues with Crafton or Rhodes. Why the heck do we have to have Sauter again? The dude, the, the dude is just peaked and he's angry all the time. Like He's always angry. He's like Kurt Busch in 2011. The dude is always angry. He can't not be angry. But then the worst part about this is they're going to split the 98 between Christian Akis and Grant Enfinger, who I argue deserve full-time rides of their own. I think I saw where champion power equipment scaled back from 11 to 7 races, and that was why. Okay. Well, with Denny Hamlin and FedEx have both signed extensions with Joe Gibbs Racing, and now Denny Hamlin's got a whole new sponsor now. Well, what is it now? A shop of – there's something. Offer pad. Offer pad. Offer pad. Listeners to the da- uh, Dirty Mo Media podcast, Door Bumper okay. Clear, are familiar I with this. Yes, that's great. It's going to be weird seeing a non FedEx sponsored number 11 car. I don't think I've seen that in a while outside of maybe a sports clips. It's been a long uh, uh, sports clips once or twice yeah, the past few seasons. Maybe. I don't remember Hamlin running a uh, yeah. non FedEx sponsored car before. So. And then how about this? This was weird to report today. Uh, Adam Stern of Sports Business Journal reports that approximately 10 groups are exploring the opportunity to buy NASCAR charters. So this uh, phony piece of paper nonsense garbage that uh, good old-fashioned Rob Kaufman thought up years ago is paying off for NASCAR. All right, that's it for the news. That's it for the news, and that's it for my opining. It's time we get into the featured paint scheme, I think so, Josh. Yeah, I think it's time. It's that time of the year. We've seen some new paint schemes from a variety of series. Formula One's yeah, got most a few of new them cars out. We haven't seen later this month or like uh, early March, okay. I think. Yeah, uh, and then IndyCar. Seen a few of those. Uh, but in also NASCAR, we've seen a lot because obviously they're starting this week. So I thought favorite new paint 2021. This was hard because I, I was, have as your featured paint did it, was, for, uh, it didn't just have to be NASCAR, did it? Oh, come on. Why didn't I know that? No, it didn't just have to be NASCAR. I'm changing kidding. mine. I'm Are changing mine. I like this one, but I'm changing mine. I, I, thought it, I thought it had to be NASCAR because <laughs> you picked the NASCAR guy. I thought it had to be NASCAR. Okay. Uh, Scott McLaughlin's no. PPG car is absolutely beautiful. It it literally makes me feel things that, that like humans can't. And um, I am just really happy to see that car. That is the most beautiful paint scheme I've ever seen in a race car. Uh, probably since that same paint scheme was on a NASCAR for Ryan Blaney. Um, that PPG scheme is beautiful. They just took the Ryan Blaney NASCAR scheme, put it on an Indy car, and for some reason it looks even better. I mean, yeah. holy cow. That's my favorite new one. Like, that's my favorite one. I mean, the one that I picked is good, but that's my favorite one. Okay, fine. The, the NASCAR Go one ahead that share I picked it. is Go ahead share it, Bass it's Pro worth Shops, sharing. Black Rifle Coffee for uh, 96 for Gaunt Brothers Racing. Now, and I say this because compared to his brothers and Martin Truex Bass Pro Shop scheme, uh, this one wins because of the camo. Uh, because I think if you put in a, uh, and don't get me wrong, Austin Dillon has this mm-hmm. flat black and orange kind of thing, and that's all cool and fine. That's you got that going. That's good, but it looks so bare mm-hmm. without con- contigs on the car. You know what I mean? There's no contingencies uh, logos on it, so it looks really bare. This, this looks nice. Like this looks good. You have the camo. You have 
the orange you have the, the it's just it is beautiful you have the black too and in, in addition to the orange it's it's beautiful now the one that you picked though is is my yeah. second favorite my main favorite nascar one that was my second one because this one was my favorite Definitely. I had were. a feeling I might have been stealing yours. And I kind of like should have let him pick. Yeah, I should. I should have <laughs> should let you pick first. I'm going with Daniel Suarez's Comscope 99 for trackhouse racing. Holy cow! When I saw this car, I'm like instantly brightens up the track, man. Um, so it's got you know it's got the black over the top. It's got the sides, uh, a mix of greens, blues, reds, and oranges. It just looks awesome. Cannot wait to see it. I think it's only got like four or six races this year. But when it does race, who's ever spotting the ninety or the ninety nine is going to have an easy time picking it out on the track wherever it's at. It's an awesome looking car. Um, all right, so let's catch up on this month's winners, Rob. Why don't you tell everyone about uh, who yeah, won over the past racing. month since we did uh, our not New very Year's much, special? But we did have racing. The Chili Bowl happened over the over the over our break, I guess. And Kyle Larson is now back to back champion about that. So how about that, Kyle Larson starting off twenty twenty one. Very, very good way to start off 2021. Um, then we have 24 Hours of Daytona. Uh, the overall was run by the DPI, was uh, Wayne Taylor Racing, Felipe Albuquerque, Helio Castroneves, Alexander Rossi, and Ricky Taylor. Uh, that was really rad, actually, because the uh, Wayne Taylor team won with Ricky in the, in the car. And then uh, I'll get I'll skip ahead, I guess, a little bit here, uh, because Jordan Taylor won in GTLM. So it was a family affair. Again, the Taylors winning it. Uh, at, at, at Daytona, it just, it always happens. Anyway, in LMP2, Era Motorsport yeah. of Paul Luchatin, Ryan yeah. Dial, Dwight Merriman, and Kyle Tilley won. Uh, LMP3, Riley Motorsports, Scott a Andrews, Oliver Askew, Spencer Piggott, and Gar Robinson won that one. I already mentioned uh, GTLM was won by Corvette Racing and Jordan Taylor, but also Antonio Garcia and Nikki Katzberg won that race. How about Garcia? That Garcia... Um, COVID thing. He had a COVID positive test come back to him during the race and they took him out of the car because he was positive. Yeah. For and then he reveals like after the race, it was a false positive. How about that for a, how'd you like that for a, a crazy day of crazy Daytona? And you're like, they pull you out of the car. That was like a, in basketball. They said Kevin Durant, they pulled him from the start because he had a, I don't know if you heard about this, Josh, but they pulled Kevin Durant from one of the games. He, he They didn't let him start because of a, a test. And then they had another one come back inconclusive, so they let him go play. Uh, they they retested him again, and then they pulled him out again. Like they pulled him out again, and he he wasn't allowed to play the rest of the game. So he came in, he came in off the bench, played maybe about five minutes or whatever, and then they pulled him again out of the out of the game. COVID testing is weird. I don't know how they do it. Okay. It's, it's like contract. It's like contact tracing, and then false positives and all this other stuff. It's it's crazy. It's not a we it's not a fun world to live in. Um so but yeah, so Antonio Garcia had kind of a similar situation to that where he was like, "Wait a minute. I can race the race. No, I can't now." But then it, it, that's the th that's the thing that was worse is he just got in the car. Now, if he's positive for COVID, anybody else who sits in that car is going to get COVID, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it has a potential, yeah. That's just lovely. Um uh and then in GTD, the HTP Windward Motorsport yeah. Indy Dante uh Philip Ellis, Mauro Engel, and Russell Ward won uh, in class. Um, moving on from the World H24, uh, we actually had the New Zealand Grand Prix. Uh, that was one. Actually, this was a really good race if you didn't get a chance to watch the New Zealand Grand Prix. Um, Toyota Racing Series over there in New Zealand is really fun. Um, so is S5000 in Australia. Those those are really cool summer sports to watch. They're little sprint races, but they're like it's like New Zealand and, and Australian IndyCar. They kind of run S5000 is more like Australian IndyCar because they don't run like a F3 chassis like the Toyota Racing Series does. But uh, that was really good. But New Zealand Grand Prix, Shane Van Gisbergen won. Uh, the Bathurst 100 winner from this year comes around and hops himself in an open-wheeled car and, get, and, and goes out there and wins. And he beat Andre Heimgardner, his fellow supercar's uh, uh, rival, I guess I should say, or I don't think they're really rivals, but they race against each other on track. So that was pretty cool to see some supercars guys mix it up with, uh, you know, regular open wheel New Zealand guys. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then World of Outlaws was at Volusia Speedway, uh, February 5th, Brad Sweet won, and February 7th, Logan Chukart. I, I got to help you with this. I, I, don't, I don't follow World of Outlaws as intensely as I follow Chukart. USAC, so that's my Chukart. biggest problem. Okay, so that's it for catching up on winners. Let's uh, move into the next segment. All right. What do we got, Josh? 
we're just going to preview, kind of go through the changes of the year, maybe dabble on our opinions a little bit of what uh, what's changing, what you can look forward to. So first off, we obviously have the change that Rob has repeatedly said in the in recent since this became news, how much he loves it. It's no longer the Gander RV and Outdoor Truck Series. It's the Camping World Truck Series. He's very excited about that. Um, nice Motorsports, completely new look here, Rob. Um, you're going to have Ryan Truex in the 40, Carson Hosevar in the 42, and then Brett Moffitt makes a jump from GMS Racing to Nice. He's in the 45. All those guys will compete for the championship. Brett Moffitt's name will come up later. The 44 car is also going to have a, a mixture of names. We haven't heard who that is yet, but... Um, veterans and rookies will be in that one that's kind of an interesting lineup ryan truex getting in another shot at a full-time truck ride and obviously brett moff i don't care what he what he's in i think he's going to do good i mean he outperformed the hour motorsports car i think last year to what people's expectations were uh dgr crosley essentially becomes david gill and racing in the truck series Haley deegan's going to be in the one i didn't expect the number one to come out i thought it was going to be the 17 um and then tanner gray are in the 15 and full-time efforts Thor Sport, as you mentioned, switches from Ford to Toyota. And you said, you know, Matt Crafton, Sauter, Ben Rhodes are the full time drivers. Grant Infinger and Christian Neckis will split the 98. Definitely disappointing because Grant Infinger won the, won the regular season. Definitely had a career year two last year. Two years ago or last year. Two years ago, right? Two yeah. Years ago. So again, it was in 19. What, didn't he win a championship? Season. Yeah. When did he, win? Did he, he almost won the championship. He didn't win the championship. He ran. He right. won the regular season championship in nineteen, but he didn't have a race win. Okay, that that's and what, that's he was out in the first round. So, yeah, and I think you know now with the Toyota, I don't know what the fifty one's doing in the fifty one car for KBM's usually Kyle Busch in development drivers. But come on, man, let's get Grant Infinger in some races and and in that car and at least try to fill out his schedule a little bit. Cause here's a guy who He's I think can really honestly times win the and championship. He has potential to do it. Uh, I think, yeah, he, last year was a great year and now he's with Toyota. Arguably they'll, I think they'll have more resources though. Mm-hmm. They were the only, they were the big Ford team last for the past few years. Anyways, I digress. Uh, speaking of Kyle Busch motorsports, as everyone knows, John Hunter and Chandler Smith are taking over the rides there. So a second year in a row, they've made a clean sweep of who's in behind the wheel. They're, primary trucks um kyle bush announced i didn't make the change here uh I did where he's racing that. but he is racing five i know truck richmond races is this one year. of them. i know Pokemon richmond is one up. of them i can't remember what which because of course yeah, okay richmond. okay he's kind of got a he's got a really mm-hmm. limited selection because he can't race in the, in the seven playoff races and he can't race in the three trip races so there goes 10 races uh oh and he can't race in the regular season finale race either so he has only 10 options, 10 races he can race at option wise. So that um, he was pretty limited. GMS Racing returned Sheldon Creed, Zane Smith, and Tyler Ankrum as full time drivers. Um, but they add Chase Purdy, who is basically um, Moffat's replacement. And then Rafael Assard, who was originally part time, but now has been up to full time. So there's the quintet of full time drivers. Five, five for people who don't know what quintet is. For, uh, GMS going to be exciting to watch that yes. there. And then Timothy Peters, everyone's very excited about this. I, this is awesome. Um, new team, Rackley, uh, WAR in, in the 25 Chevrolet. Um, I believe they're a late model team moving up uh, to the truck series. That is exciting because it kind of reminds me of yep. uh, all those yep. West Coast teams that created the truck series back in the day. Well, especially and, when uh, you still have Bill McNally out there, so, too. Um, I, I, that's, what's, that's what's really even cooler. And, and exactly. I, I guess to yeah, a lesser man, extent, man. David Gilliland Racing has been uh, in Arca East and, and in Arca for a while too. So that that and I don't know if or Arca West yeah. too. I don't know if you can count that as a West Coast team, but definitely you're right. I like I I think you're right. I like that a lot. I think it's it's really great to see. And I do know that the Mac oh, really? team is going to be fielding a second car part time, a truck part time this year. No, I don't think I, I don't, don't think I added that in here. Did I? I did not, but I did see that. So I wanted to kind of note here. I here's my perspective, Rob. You can disagree, add add if you want. Here's who I think who are the the, the championship contending teams, not necessarily underdogs, but championship contending teams. So GMS has five, Nice has three. I think that might be a slight bit of a stretch, oh, but I think Moffat makes a difference there. Right off the bat, David Gillen. That's not even a question. Yeah, David Gillen racing two again, a little bit of a stretch, but I think. 
the uh, potential is there for them to at least make the I'm playoffs. Not gonna, I'm not as confident as you are about the uh, good DGR guys. And I'm so glad you disagree. I'm so glad you disagree. But that that yeah, and thank you. Hallmar Friesen, uh with with um obviously Stuart Friesen. Uh, oh, I'm Hattori, afraid of Austin, Austin, Hill. Austin Hill. I'm still afraid. Uh, if I'm GK another BMW. driver, I'm afraid of Austin Hill because I'm going to count oh. him out every race, and then he's going to come out and win. That's exactly what he did, yeah. like in uh, in 19, and then 20 just came back out of a cannon, and I think was sur- surely disappointed in, in last year. And then you have uh, the McAnally uh, Hilgeman uh, entry of Derek Krause, and then the three full time teams for Thor Sports. So it's like you know, 19, 15 to 19 trucks. For ten playoff spots, I think that's awesome just to see that. So that's that. That's what I want to run down there. On to the Xfinity series. Uh, this one kind of came out of left field, literally. Scott Porchetta says, "Hey, I want to create an Xfinity uh, team, big machine racing team. All right, this is awesome." But he's he's going to have Jay Buford pilot the number forty eight Chevrolet starting at the Daytona Road Course. Originally, it was going to be the full thirty three races, but it wasn't cleared to race at Daytona, the big track. So Danny Bone will be in that in that car then late in the season to maybe get one of the uh, more experienced drivers. So maybe 2022, we'll see what happens there. But I'm interested to see this is going to be a team we're going to watch closely for sure. Um, this season to see because mm-hmm. it is late in the game, you know, when they made that announcement. Uh, JD Motorsports Field Four full time drivers in 2021. Yeah. Jeffrey Earnhardt's in the zero. Landon Castle, this one made me so happy. Landon Castle's in the four. Uh, Ryan Vargas is in the six, and Colby Howard's in the 15. Um, see, I think the, the four, I can't remember who's in the four last year. I feel like the four, the six was really the only, no, I don't think anyone. I just love this JD Motorsports year. lineup now I think about it. I love what Johnny Davis does for a lot of these drivers, especially great. people like Jeffrey Earnhardt, Landon Castle, Ryan Vargas, guys who have shown that they can compete at high levels before, but just haven't had opportunities really to show, show all that often. And, you know, when you look at a place like a road course, there's so much more of them this year. And then, you know, your Daytonas and, and even your short tracks, they have an opportunity here to maybe steal a win in a playoff spot. So that'll be fun to watch. Junior Motorsports, the all-star number eight, will be driven by Josh Berry in 12 races. That was announced last year. Miguel How about Paluto that? Where did three, this come from? Brand where, sponsorship. What has Miguel Paluto uh, been doing? Like, where, where has he been? And now he comes back know. suddenly. I'm just glad to see. I'm happy he's back too. But where has he been? Back. I've missed him. That's Everybody's all. missed him. Yeah. Earnhardt Jr. will be in, in one race. It's, I'm thinking it's going to be Martinsville in May. Uh, or April, whatever it is now, because Junior was really keen on watching the Martinsville, Martinsville race last fall for the Xfinity Series. I feel series. like that would be really a fun race about that. I think it's going to be probably would be like 300 miles, 300 laps or something, maybe 250. Probably wouldn't be that intense, but it would still be pretty fun to race. I, guess, I would, I would imagine. And it's not right in ship deciding like right. racing at Martinsville in November, or October mm-hmm. would. That's a big. That's a big selling point, also. And then Sam Mayer will take over in the latter half of the season when he turns eighteen in seventeen races. Jordan Anderson. This one kind of shocked me. Didn't expect this one because I thought he loved truck racing. He's still going to be in the truck series. He won't be racing full time there. He will field the three truck full time, but he's right, going to be racing in the thirty one Xfinity Chevrolet. I like the uh, full time throwback number. Gave me happy uh, for very, Jordan. very strong um, Turner Motorsports vibes. Big fan of that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So excited to see him. He's just an awesome story to follow. Underdog, you want to you just want to cheer for an underdog? Cheer for Jordan Anderson. Myatt Snyder will be driving the two for Richard Childress Racing full time. We discussed that. No word on a on a part time entry for, for RCR though. Our motorsports will field two cars. Brett Moffitt will be in the zero two full time, but won't be for the Xfinity Championship. He's going for the truck. Um the number three will have Tyler Reddick in the car at Daytona and Andy Lally at the Daytona road course. Other drivers will uh, be announced later. Colleg racing who expanded to two cars in 2020 expands to three in 2021. Justin Haley returns to the 11. Jeb Burton replaces Ross Chastain in the 10 and AJ Allmendinger will commandeer the 16 full time. Um, and Ross Chastain may run a fourth car in part in, in, in select races. Colleg racing, uh, 
going for it here. Uh, they had they met their goal that Chris Rice set out last year for five wins. I haven't heard of, I haven't heard a goal yet this year. What they if they if they set a goal, I'm not saying they have to, but it's this is going to be a fun trio of drivers to watch full time and just a team in general to watch. Um, Ford maintains Austin Sindrick in, at Team Penske. They add Riley Herbst with Stuart Haas Racing, but they add RSS Racing, who switches from Chevrolet to Ford, with Ryan C. grinning full-time once again. Yep. Um, and he made the playoffs last year in that in, in a car there. I kind of thought, it, RCR, look at them. Give them more effort to, you know, expansion on your technical alliance there. But Ford, I mean, it had to offer them money here. Like, here's more money for you. We, and they want to boost up their numbers. They like what Ryan Sieg does at the at the plate tracks, and that's where Ford maybe struggles a little bit more because they're obviously down on the count with numbers. Ford Who needs more. Here, Ford, this Ford is, needs a bigger presence. Well, it's kind of the, again in the lower divisions to begin with. So I think any time any time you can get the field away it. from being seventy five percent Chevrolets, I'm happy. There you go. Joe Gibbs Racing brings back Harrison Burton and Brandon Jones, full-time drivers, but Daniel Hemrick replaces Riley Herbst in the 18. The 54 will be run full-time. They, they hope to run it full-time in all 33 races. Ty Dillon, Ty Gibbs, Kyle Busch have races already picked out, and then Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex are expected to fill out some races. And I won't be surprised if Christopher Bell gets some races in there too, and you never know if there's a truck driver like John Hunter Nemechek. Could get the kid get a chance in the 54 car, you, you know, that's speculation, it's all speculation there. And then Sam Hunt Racing looks to run the full 2021 season, which includes Santino Ferrucci in 20 races, Chris Wright in seven, and uh, Brandon Godovic in the remaining six. So there's Sam Hunt Racing you know, with Toyota, uh, a little bit of Toyota back in there. So I said prospective championship contending team for the trucks. Here's mine for the uh, Xfinity, the three GRM. Full-time drivers, Annette Allgaier and Gregson, Colleague, Jeb Burton, Haley Almeninger, RCR with Snyder, RSS Racing with Sieg. That's a little I'm bit of an underdog put it out of there. The, I, especially considering just, the fact if one of these guys, if one of these guys that you've listed here underperforms, Sieg gets, Sieg gets in 100%. I think so, too. Stuart Haas with Herps. Team Penske with Cindric, Gibbs with Hemrick, Brandon Jones, eight, and Harrison Burton. That's 13. Obviously, I, I mentioned JD Motorsports. They have a two, three drivers there that if they have a good race at a, at a you know, and a kind of out of the park win at Daytona, Talladega, uh, or, uh, oh, that's right. I think they're going to Talladega twice this year. So they're going to have, they're going to have three opportunities before the, uh, 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 well, the, uh, yeah. So they got so they have the three uh, super speedway races in the regular season. They have all those road courses and the short tracks. JD Mercer's might be able to sneak out a win there. Who knows? And then again, you know the Xfinity series Best just always ever. provides like, whoa, where'd this guy come from to finish third? You never Best know. One event that there. third becomes a first. It's in the Xfinity so the Cup series. series. I'm sorry. Like just, yeah. just I'm excited for Saturday because it's true. Best, Best racing is the Xfinity series. It, it is. It is. We how many times did we say that last year? So the Cup Series, all this stuff might just be review again as of before, but Ross Chastain's going to the 42 in Chip Ganassi Racing. Kyle Larson moves to Andrick Motorsports. What was the 88? And now it's Bowman moves to the 48, uh, replacing seven-time Jimmy Johnson. JTT Dorter retains Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Ryan Priest, but Stenhouse holds the only team's uh, charter, and Priest will run the whole season if funding can be found. Eric Jones takes over the 43, which, by the way, that armor all scheme, be all weird orange looks an orange slick, 43, uh, for RPM. But I'm pretty sure they're going to run the petty blue a little bit more often, too, so you, I, it won't be that bad. I'm sure. You thought the Eckridge green was weird to see with Eric Almirola. Now the armor all yeah. orange, that's definitely – that's 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 like throw back to Lance Snacks no, 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 back no, no. Let's in the go, 90s. Let's go a little there bit. There you go. I reached a into the – more recent and go Tony Stewart's armor all – uh, cars that he raced in the uh, nationwide Bush series back uh, like at Daytona. Yeah. Like um, yeah. the 20, the Toyota, mm -hmm. like that last, that only in 08. Yeah. That's okay, what yeah. I'm digging. That one is a that's, little, that's, yeah. that's the car there I like go. to Don't think you, about. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> Throwback idea. Throwing it out there. So Spire Motorsports expands to two full-time teams. They wanted to have two full-time drivers, but only going to have one. That's Corey LaJoy. And, the other, the 77 car will be split amongst uh, a number of drivers, starting with Jamie McMurray at Daytona. His son's reaction to the him 
telling him, hey, by the way, your dad's racing in the Daytona 500 was gold. That right there is worth it. I don't I don't want him to finish last, but Jamie McMurray finished his last. His son's reaction was enough for me. Uh, Trackhouse Racing debuts. Daniel Suarez behind Still the wheel. Still waiting for my orange All those cars yeah. look good, by the way. I picked the comp. I'm just, that's all I want. Please give me one sure. orange RS scheme. You gave it to me last year at Darlington, and I just want to say that it made my heart very warm. But if I could have one, a beautiful track house design scheme with RS orange, I would be so happy. I mean, I don't even care if you put white on there. Like, just give me an RS orange paint scheme. That'd be great. Rob's May's declaration. Let's hope it happens. Front Row Motorsports has hired Anthony Alfredo to replace John Hunter Nemechek in the 38. Uh, so that, that he's going to be a rookie this year. Uh, Live Fast Motorsports with ownership from BJ McLeod and Matt Tiff debuts. BJ McLeod will be serving as the team's driver as well. Stuart Haas Racing's only change is Chase Briscoe moves to the Cup Series, taking over the 14 from Clint Boyer, who moves to the Fox Sports booth. That's <laughs> going to be exciting. That, that commercial, that, that Fox hat with, with the elevator. I'm like, really? first off, I've ridden that elevator. So that kind of like, ooh, I've been there. Yes, I've, ooh, I've been there. And, uh, this the whole uh, running up the staircase deal. I'm like, oh, I've been there. I haven't been up the stairs. We didn't go up the stairs, but all right. I was about that to was ask Charlotte Motor where, Speedway where it was, but didn't know that. I kind of had an idea. I, yeah. Yeah. I love the whole. Still uh, trying to catch. Ooh, hey. I was still trying I to catch. Me. I showed, awesome. um, trying to catch I showed my fiance that video the, of, 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 um, of him face of, of when Clint Boyer chased down Jeff Gordon. Uh, at, at Phoenix in 2012, I was. Mm-hmm. Right. She was like, "Why is why did Jeff do that?" She was all hung up on why Gordon did that, and I was like, "You know what? I don't know either. <laughs> I really don't know." He was mad. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, I'm sure he he obviously I'm sure. How come it. Clint Boyer um, always but, ends I up with people we'll that there. He's we'll with? Like he ended. He called Michael Waltrip the worst driver in NASCAR, and he ends up driving for Michael Waltrip. Now he fights with Jeff Gordon. He has his rivalry with Jeff Gordon. Now he's sure. co-workers with Jeff Gordon. He attempted to fight Jeff Gordon. He tried Jeff well. Gordon. He attempted to fight Gordon Jeff Gordon. Gordon fought him better than he, I don't know. Gordon wrecked him. So My point is, Clint Boyer always ends up working with yeah. or for people that he's called terrible people in the past. <laughs> I just think <laughs> it's a great lesson. Forgiveness. Second, his forgiveness. That's the lesson in this podcast right there. All right. But I'm excited for that trio in the booth. I think it's going to be fun to see that. Uh, Bubba Wallace has reunited with Toyota and with the new Michael Jordan, Denny Hamlin racing yeah, team. Didn't racing. Didn't oh, we're, we're live, I didn't know that. 2311 racing. All excited about I was going to say, you're living under a rock. I don't know, but I just that. felt and like we next one. It. Yeah. And Christopher Bell takes over the racing uh, 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, the New York Racing, I, NY I Racing know. teams at New York or NY it's, Racing? It's, it's not going to happen. I'm going to create NY Racing. I'm kind of disappointed I didn't know that. Um, but they announced in early January that uh, uh, owned by uh, owner John Cohen, he plans on running the full season, but they just said they're not going to be at Daytona. Um, you know, I don't – obviously, you mentioned them earlier. I don't want to – don't know anything. I don't want to speculate too hard. But, you know, when you have 44 cars already there, um, maybe Has try to go for a race at – There's not – Because there'll be plenty of those. Yeah, just, me. you know, let's, let's make the trip. Yeah, the, yeah, let's make the trip worth it. I'm sure. Um, Isn't this guy still maybe part like of the, the, the guy the from idea Team XX Extreme? I know this team used to be this or the lineage of right. this team. You know, we, you know, like how uh, uh, was Jaguar? Yeah, Red Bull used to be. Oh crap, Jaguar. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think it's just the, the lineage. They, I don't know that for sure. Get their hauler uh, stolen before race- a race. And then they were never heard from again after that. No, but it happened. I know my team X X Extreme stolen. before, where they had entered a race, and they were at the hotel, and someone carjacked their their hauler, and and then like abandoned it like several miles up the road. They just found it, like someone stole it, took it for a joyride, and then I don't remember that. Just abandoned the truck up the side of the road or something. I feel like I remember that. I damn. I know it's happened. Mm-hmm. It's happened before. I remember I it was like them. that, but I don't remember who. And it then was. let's never forget that that disastrous Daytona yeah. 500 qualifying session where they tried to 
have group qualifying and Reed Sorensen ran out there with basically a parachute in the back of his car and wrecked half the field. Clint Boyer, yeah. And we got an awesome Clint Boyer sound. By we brought, it always Boyer. comes back to Clint Boyer. So we brought so it all back to Clint Boyer. We brought it all now, back. Uh, another Clint Boyer enemy that's coming back. Oh, by the way, let's give a shout out to Jamie Little. She will be the first mm-hmm. female play-by-play broadcaster in motorsports in the United States for the Arca Series. Uh, so give that a watch. I hope it's not single uh, file when it's crap. on FS1 this year. It's going to be know, single file well, crap, yeah. but it's going to be yeah. nice to hear Jamie Little talk. <laughs> yeah. she'll bring some new and interesting stories, I'm sure, to the to the booth. And again, I will get on my soapbox just for a moment and say, "Why didn't we unify Is she all be three with Bill divisions?" Parsons? And I exit she my call soapbox. Her Bill Parsons? Call it great. I would hope I it's Phil who Parsons. our partner is probably Phil Parsons. I like he's, that. He's that could be a good one. I don't Jamie think he Little ever gets a chance Parsons. to tell him. It's very unconventional, but I feel like that could work for some reason. Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. All right, for the third, third, third try here, Colic Racing <laughs> plans to run the Super Speedway in road courses races this year in the Cup Series. Um, again, they're trying to maybe go full time racing in the Cup Series in 2022. Probably one of those ten groups trying to find a charter um, that you mentioned with Adam Stern. Uh, Kaz Grala will attempt to qualify for the Daytona 500 in the 16, while AJ Allmending will be behind that car at the Daytona Road Course. That's going to be a fun one to watch for sure. Gaunt Brothers Racing will be at Daytona with Ty Dillon, as you mentioned. It's a consensus that that's this team has scaled back uh, to part time once again in 2021. But I did see today, well, they will be at the Daytona Road Course with Ty Dillon as well. All right, that's the preview. Lot to kind of review and cover there. It's going to be a fun weekend of races uh, starting, you know, we're, 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 we're recording this on Monday. The clash is happening when we're going to be hopefully releasing this. So it's going to be a fun six days of, 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 of on track time. So let's all, let's all just be glad the 2021 season is getting going on to upshift downshift. Everyone's favorite segment, our favorite segment. Hopefully we have some disagreement here. If you're new to the podcast, Let's review. If you're familiar, you know what's going to happen here. But if you're new, upshift means we agree. Downshift means you disagree. You can throw it in the neutral. You can upshift hard. You can upshift soft. You can downshift hard or you can downshift soft. You know, there's really no way. You can even throw into a fictitious 10th gear if you want, just if you're that passionate about it. Um, But Today we have all sort of news deals, but we can also have hypotheticals in this segment as well, based off of something that's happened in the recent news. So with with that, let's get started here. Um, has seen the images of the work and transfer na- transformation of Bristol Motor Speedway into a dirt track increased your optimism for the races set to take place there in uh, March? Uh, no. Do you upshift I, or downshift? I downshift, actually. It hasn't increased my optimism for it at all. Um I'm still concerned about whether or not this will be a good race and whether or not Bristol on dirt can produce a good show with this type of car. I just think it's going to be, I mean, this is just such an odd decision still. Like I am, I am, I'm, 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 it's like a morbid curiosity. I want to see it's, I don't even know how to describe this without like, saying something that's completely outlandish and flippant but it's like watching something and being like okay if it's a colossal failure that's cool if it's not that's also cool you know like i don't know if this is going to be a complete failure and blow up in nascar's faces or if this is going to blow my expectations out of the water and actually entertain me i haven't quite decided on how this is gonna be i'm really concerned I know that they released some images or or said some details about how the cars are going to be set up in that, you know, they probably weren't going to have a front splitter and they were going to raise the front of the car up a little bit. Like that could help. That could help. But I'm still concerned that these Gen 6 cars will not race well on dirt. That is my major concern. I think the trucks proved they can do it well. I think Knoxville should be a great, great show for the trucks. But I just am still having a hard time believing that this cup race at Bristol on dirt will be anything more than a one-off experiment. First off, I will also preface this that, well, yeah, I have failed as I, how did I forget this? As I wrote this question, 
read the Tony Stewart story oh, I forgot about, about uh, that. kind of the yeah. recap about how he kind of said, "Oh, I, I, I don't. Oh, I, I'm not going to get a cup race or a truck race. Okay, we're not going to. I'm tearing up the contract. That is, that is, that is peak Tony Stewart. Okay, so I can't wait for Tony Stewart to be at this race and that gif of the guy walking up behind people and like slinging open the uh, the lawn chair and sitting down." That's what Tony Stewart's going to do on top of the holler. Hey, you yeah, know Del Dora would right be a better here. show, probably. Um, I, it has it, I agree. I agree, especially when you have already the experience kind of getting it done. I'm neutral. My optimism has grown a little bit. I can't agree. I like the effort and the seemingly um, step-by-step process that they have shown. I've grown a little bit, but I'm neutral on it. I Again, I think I'm like you. I'm like... If it works out, great. You know what? You swung at a, you were blindfolded, <laughs> How and you swung at a pitch, and you hit a home run. Exactly, and that's kind of my worry. I'm like, I. It's awesome to see cup cars going back Bristol to dirt, and we have so many you know, other years. great tracks. I, I mean, I understand they're not like not all of them are as and accustomed that, to host I, I, a NASCAR event like Bristol is. But again, if you could make something like Eldora work, who's to say you couldn't make? an actual dirt track work instead of having to bring take Bristol and make it a dirt track. When Bristol already was exciting as it is, and it has been pretty good, it's put on pretty good races for the past couple of years, despite all the issues with the Gen 6. The bottom line having, like I, I said this, I've said this a lot, is that, that, that uh, PJ1 being at Bristol is good. Everywhere else, no. At Bristol, yes. And it's it's proven that, but now they're going to dirt. It's like, but we just we just fixed the racing at Bristol that everybody's wanted to fix for years, and now we put the race on dirt. I don't get it. Yeah, I the one thing I will also say is that you know I was I was wrong about the Roval. Hey, I'll be wrong about the dirt. Hey, I didn't still have any issues with the Roval here. when Again, it was announced. Either. I don't know what the. So we'll see. Um, we'll see. That that's 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 my like official statement. Like we'll if see. they were like, "What's your opinion?" We'll see. Um, General Motors announced its intentions to eliminate production of gasoline and diesel diesel automobiles and to only produce electric vehicles by 2035. Should auto racing sanctioning bodies start preparing how this will affect well, the I mean, sport? It's 15 years from now, I think now. they have to start preparing. They have to upshift. Because, I mean, this is the thing. is Like it or not, and, and believe me, I don't exactly like this. I think the goals that they're placing in mind are a bit too lofty. I think I'm all for the idea of Going to greener, uh, greener, and, and and greener energy and, and and efficiency and all that stuff. I'm all for that. Don't get me wrong, but this is what I'm concerned about. Is that's 15 years? I mean, you are where? I mean, I think you mentioned it on Twitter, and I I thought it was a good point. Is where is the infrastructure for all of this? How are we going? I mean, we are going to if we're going to charge these cars, we need to quickly come up with a way to make sure that we're not polluting the air even worse by creating more coal power plants or more oil power plants, things like that, in order to power all these cars. Like until you have, you know, a solid a solid infrastructure of solar power or wind power or things that aren't natural gas related and necessary, I just don't think this is feasible right now. Now I don't know what 15 years in the future is going to be. Will we have the infrastructure to actually go through and do that? Maybe. Maybe in 15 years, there's a solar panel farm on every block. I don't know. But right now, that's not the case. So it seems very far-fetched and crazy to even contemplate that. But then adding on how are motorsports going to con- – how are going to, they going to deal with this? Holy cow, they should be worried. They need to – I mean, racing bodies need to be – we need to be ready for the next 15, 20 years of just straight-up change that's going to be happening. Because, you know, racing is determined – Racing helps determine where consumer automobiles go. And if they're going to, I mean, they've already been kind of testing these things. Formula E isn't necessarily like a testing ground, like I would say, argue NASCAR is, but I could see them going in that direction. You would, I'm just, that's going to be tough. Is who are, is NASCAR's fan base going to buy into an electric series? Let's say it's not even the cup series. Let's say, NASCAR starts like a, a regional series or makes ARCA into all electric or something like that. Is that even going to catch on at the short track level? Is that going to catch on at the, the grassroots level? You know, that's the things that you have to ask yourself. Um, because Formula E catches on on a global scale. 
Uh, but it markets itself much different than any other motorsport. It markets itself quite literally as an event and a street event. Like the main reason they go to street courses is because they want it to be like a huge event that gets people out downtown and gets people out into the city and gets people seeing not just the race, but then other aspects of the race. I mean, NASCAR doesn't have that. They go from one race to another. IndyCar is the same way. Formula One even. You know, these are things that these guys are going to have to worry about. This is – I absolutely upshift that this is something that they need to start preparing about for now because if if governments and car companies themselves are setting these goals – we as racing sanctioning bodies and racing fans need to start preparing for these changes as well. Yeah, I upshift. If you, I think if you aren't already thinking about this somewhere and talking about it at least once a month, maybe you're behind. Um, yeah, I upshift before. Like yeah, Rob mentioned the tweet. I wasn't really thinking about the power plants, but I'm thinking about my, my apartment complex. I don't think there's a – if there's a charging station here, I don't know where it is. That was what kind of what I was referring to. And, and like where's the infrastructure to for 2.8 million cars that they produced in 2018? I only think that number will at least go up a little bit by 2035. You know, where's, where's, where's the infrastructure to charge these cars at, you know, at my, at the grocery store I work at, there isn't a charging station. Um, you know, so that, that was my point on that, but you bring up because if we're going to power the the thing about it is if we're going green as well, it kind of defeats the purpose to go green. If we're having to power all of these cars with like dirty, dirty fuel like coal or or oil or or natural gas stuff like that stuff that's not renewable stuff that you know is going to defeat the purpose of this green energy push if we're going to go green then we need to have uh, a decent infrastructure of green energy and right now unfortunately most of the united states at least is still powered by coal natural gas and oil things like that that are not renewable and are in some cases not clean i understand that there's some clean coal out there i'm not going to get into that but you know i i I, that's what i'm saying like if you're going to go green you have to commit to it you can't just say okay all of the cars now the cars aren't producing any uh, emissions but we're doubling it because we've got to power all these cars by different ways if that makes any sense yeah i think uh i think it's first off it's a lofty goal from 15 years i think gm bit off a little bit more they can chew there myself both from the infrastructure side and and then just from the production side and the realistic side and making it cost efficient for everyone um but my guess is is <laughs> is that whenever they say the year is like oh um, by the way we're only producing electric cars the cup right. series will still be powered by some sort of fuel it's not going to be and that might be part of the lure of nascar and indy cars that you can hear Room go by and say, you know, that might be part of the lure. You can hear loud cars once again on the speedways and instead of, you know, the highways. I don't know. That could be part of the marketing strategy of it. But if if I was not informed about this and I'm NASCAR, I'm like, okay, what's what's the plan here? And we already saw GM has shaken up its motorsports group a little bit here and people being in different roles. So garbage who knows what that, that means as well. Super Bowl um, last night. Don't get me started as a GM loyalist about that one. All right. Kyle Busch's five Xfinity Series races will be at Atlanta, Coda, Texas, Nashville Super Speedway, and Road America. Kyle Busch wins three races and reaches 100 victories in 2021. He wins wins at Atlanta and Texas. That's it. He stays at 99. Mm, I'm going to upshift. Never been to Coda. I really think he Hasn't been to Nashville in like 10, 20, 10 years. Uh, Hasn't run Road America. I don't know if he ever has, if not for a long time. I think I just don't see it. I see him. I not. see Atlanta and Texas as being big time possibilities, but I maybe Nashville. Actually, you might be right. Maybe Nashville. We'll see. I'm not convinced he's going to win Nashville, but he might because he has been there. But there's no way he's winning Coda and Road America. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to upshift. I think he gets three races. I don't know where they're going to be at. I think you make a great argument for Atlanta and Texas and Nashville, but. I think Kyle Busch is just too good of a racer not to be able to adapt and not be thinking about Coda already in North America if he hasn't been already in the simulator to do it. Um, I He's a smart guy. He's a great racer. So I upshift. He gets 100 wins this year. Um, should NASCAR consider Saturday sprint races for the Cup Series to boost fan experience and financial opportunities for track not operators? Not on Saturday. Upshift or downshift? On Friday. Friday night. I want, I want, I want. This is crazy. Like- this is crazy. This is what I want. I want a sprint race 
of, depending on track length, anywhere between 25 and 50 laps. Okay? And I want this to serve as almost an unofficial final practice session, except, except for the fact that it is a race. See, it, it gives you a final practice session, but it gives you a second a, a race. So this essentially creates more seat time for the drivers since they're getting less of it anyway and more bang for the fans' buck. This is – this would essentially be, give, give, give or take on the track size, maybe about a half hour to a 45-minute race between 25 and 50 laps, depending – like if it's on a short track, it's 50 laps. If it's on a speedway or whatever, it's, 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 it's 25. You know, let's go that way. Um, and it's just a quick, like, final practice session in race conditions. Get your car set up for race trim and go. That's what I want to see. That's the kind of sprint race that I want to see because you'll see drivers actually use it as uh, as an opportunity to test and see what their car is going to do. Um, and it would uh, essentially give fans more bang for the buck. And the reason why I say do it on Friday is because nothing is better than Friday night racing. And as much as I love the Truck Series doing it, Truck Series just isn't cutting the mustard for me right now lately on uh, running Friday night races. They don't do it as much as they used to. Um, and so I'm going to say that's what I want to see. That's what I would like. I, I'm going to kind of change the upshift and downshift, and I'm going to say that's what I – that's I, I upshift it, but I add that's how it should be. It should be a short race that should serve as a practice session slash a race. You could set up your car. You could get to see how your car is going to race in around other cars and in a race condition. And I'm not – maybe don't pay points for it. Maybe playoff points. Let pay play, playoff points for it maybe. Not like actual points, points, but like playoff points or something. Yeah, like top 10 playoff yeah kind of like that. An you could stage. trade it so that teams like take it seriously, you know. Say, okay, there's not points on the line, but there yeah. are. You know if that what that means. So we're going to put playoff points in the line, meaning if you win this race – you get, you know, how you get an extra two playoff points or something. You know, we, we do that. Um, I think that would be yeah. an interesting way to keep uh, fan engagement going, keep the uh, uh, keep the drivers with seat time, because that's the number one thing that I think people are going to miss is the lack of track time that they're going to probably end up seeing at races in the future. Um, a a three-day ticket is not going to get you as many cars on track mm -hmm. as it used to be. Um, and I think Going forward, that's kind of the, yeah. the way that NASCAR needs to approach approach it, especially if they want to do reduced uh, two-day shows or whatever, like they're talking about. Yeah, I obviously the big thing here is like if you tear up that car in the in the sprint race, that but how's you, that any different from just the wrecking car, that final sucks. practice? That's going to be you're you're absolutely well. Final the difference is is that you probably don't have four, a full field of cars on the on the track. Well, maybe and not at the at you weren't involved time, in someone else's mess. That's a different. Car. Everybody would go out and make a run at one point. So, not all at once. No. Yeah. Yeah, but not all at once. But not all at. Once. And so I think that's that's gonna, that would be the drawback. But I definitely upshift this for like places like Dover, Michigan, who don't have mm -hmm. two races anymore. Or, or, or like a Texas who doesn't only has the one cup points pain race, you know, places that, that they only have one date. That would be my thing here. Of course, I've said before, I think they need to split the Dover race into, to, into one 200 lap race and a 300 lap race over a weekend. You get 500 laps of racing in two races instead of one 400 lap race. I think it'd be a little bit more exciting and fun for the cup series. Same thing for the race at Michigan. I think it'd just be cooler and play both points that way. Anyways, I digress. I upshift. A little bit different than you. I like your idea on the Friday for sure. So way to, way, way to, way to change the, the question there to, to make it better. I like that. Um, so since the Daytona 500, last one here, folks, this is a question five. Since the Daytona 500 is NASCAR's biggest race of the season, it should have a larger field size other than other races. See, this is weird because I'd like to see the Daytona 500 have 43 entries again because I felt like that was always the way it should be. So if I'm going to upshift this, I'm going to say, yeah, but cap 43, just like old times, you know, like – you know, IndyCar only has like 23 full-time cars on any given week, but they still manage to pull 33 cars because it's always been 33. Now, 28 cars, 29 have raced an IndyCar before. I mean, that's not like full-time basically in a non-Indy 500 race. So that's not something unca un uncharacteristic. In NASCAR, you regularly have 38, 39 cars showing up out of a 40-car field. You're not filling it out, but you still have a decent amount. I think if you expanded it to 43 just for the 500, I think it would make – 
it would probably help car counts because then you have a lot of more open teams with an opportunity to make the race uh, as opposed to capping it at 40 like they do now and sending you know so many guys home. If you end up only sending one or two guys home out of 45 entries, I think that's the best way you can go for it. So I, I actually do like that. I will upshift. I will say go for it, NASCAR. If you want to make it 43 entries on um, the Daytona 500, I'm all for that and 40 everywhere else. That's fine because right now we're seeing what they do with the truck series. Truck series can have 40 trucks. It's now having 36 trucks this year. You know, I love that. First of all, I love the truck series going back to 36 oh, trucks. Yeah. That's That never should have changed. Um, yeah, but the truck series having 40 trucks is even better because that's healthy for the series. And I think NASCAR, if they kind of played their cards right could attract open teams to buy charters this way and it would make the charter values go up more um because you know the more people that entered the cars you know obviously you'd start bumping guys the more and more entries so you know people would have more of an incentive to buy a charter and to run the full season and be able to be charter eligible uh they might be an open team which means they can miss the field but if they're fast enough they shouldn't have to worry about that yeah, I I agree. You know, I wrote this question so I could literally say what you just said. I think if you know, let's let's use this year for example. If you had a forty three car field for Daytona five hundred right now, as it stands, you'd send one car home. That might bring the NY Racing team in, so you have forty five cars there. So they look okay. Look, we have with forty four entries. We as it currently stands, we have four opportunities. But in a forty five car field or, or entry list, and we have forty three spots, we have seven opportunities. The percentage of you Missing the race is lower. And, um, you know, I think that that would be great to see. I know, and I, and I think I would hope that if they increase charters, because they've talked about it, you know, we have to see an increased field count uh, or field, field count. I, I would like to see the, the charters be like at 38 and the max field go back up to 43. But the Daytona 500, certainly, you can't have any more than that because 43 because you don't have enough pit stalls. So that's 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 where you kind of run into that cap issue. But forty three, absolutely, day twenty five hundred should be that way. It's I kind of thought of this question as you know the Indy five hundred always brings more cars. They're sending cars home. It's the biggest race of the year, hands down. Day twenty five hundred is the biggest race of the year for NASCAR. And even if hands you have down, the issue, and I'm sorry, uh, before we move on, All right, even if you have the issue yeah. of nobody getting sent okay. home, that still bodes well because you have open teams that would get opportunities to earn money, earn prize money, earn earn. TV time and Correct. and actually have an opportunity to to get Correct. sponsors and get drivers and expand their operations. I really don't see why that would be a bad idea. I agree. Yeah, that's exactly it. Exactly it right there. All right. Well, this show has gone on longer than I predicted, and that's okay. We had a lot to talk about. Uh, we had a few rants ourselves here. That's fun. All right, rollers featured racetracks coming up at you here. I'm going to try to go through as quick as, quick as possible. Hopefully, I pronounce all names right. Let's get started. So NASCAR kicks off the 2021 campaign with its five divisions in Florida this weekend. Since 1982, the Day 2500 has been the exclusive season opener for the NASCAR Cup Series. In fact, I didn't know this, but 1982 was the first time day, the Daytona 500 served as a season opening race for the Cup Series. Prior to Daytona, Riverside served as a, a season opening race from 1970 to 1981, and before that also in 1965. The three-quarter mile Charlotte Speedway was the season opening race in 1949. Then the Daytona Beach Street and Road Course hosted the season opening race in 1950 and 1951. But in the years 1952, 53, and 54, Palm Beach Speedway was the site to kick off the NASCAR season. Palm Beach Speedway was located at the grounds of South Florida Fair along Highway 98 today, and uh, it stood there from 1949 to 1983. The track was originally a one-half mile dirt track, and for one season, it also had a one-third mile oval as well, but in late 1955, the track was paved to asphalt. The NASCAR Grand National Division uh, first race at Palm Beach Speedway was in 1952, the season opener on January 20th, 1952. Tim Flock took home the trophy that day, uh, just as he would the seasons, uh, at the end of the season, the championship. He dominated leading 194 of 200 laps, and just for one brief moment, he was overtaken on lap 142 when Brother Fonte led for six laps. Um, Tim would later lap the entire field in his 51 Hudson. Lee Petty finished second, uh, and Fonte finished third. Future ARCA champion Iggy Katona finished 23rd, uh, excuse me, started 23rd, 
and finished 19th in an Oldsmobile numbered 888. Back in the day when you could have three triple digit numbers. That's awesome. I mentioned that Tim Flock would be champion at the end of 1952 season. He was officially the champion following the second race at Palm Beach Speedway on November 30th when the season concluded there. Uh, he didn't fare as well in that 200 lapper. He started second but finished 12th after crashing. Uh, Herb Thomas was victorious that day, leading a cl- clean sweep of 200 laps. Uh, Fonte Flock was second. Uh, he was two laps back. And a, a driver by the name of George Bush was 10th in a 52 automobile, numbered 116. He made five career s- cup uh, starts, all in 1952. Everyone's favorite mechanic, Smokey Eunuch, uh, was also in that race. He finished second to last, though, in 18th after George dropping out Bush with an ignition issue uh, in a car. Man named George. Yes, Bush. a man no named George relation Bush. That's to awesome. Either president, I assume. Okay. Uh, I, I, no, I don't think so. I, I, I <laughs> couldn't find much if I Googled George Bush race car driver and it didn't come up with interesting results. Um, after uh, two, after two full months off, the NASCAR Grand National Division returned to Palm Beach Speedway on February 1st, 1953 for the season opening race. Petty Enterprises claimed the top two positions with Lee Petty in a 53 Dodge and Jimmy LaWallen in a 52 Plymouth numbered 41. Tim Flock kept the tradition, albeit a short one, of having a Flock in the top three at Palm Beach with a third place finish. It would be a year before NASCAR returned on February 7th, 1954, Herb Thomas was victorious a second time at Palm Beach. Dick Rathman sat on the pole, led 21 of the first 67 laps, but dropped out with a blown gasket, as did Al Keller, who led the other 46 of the first 67 laps. Uh, he, he retired also with a blown gasket as well. Uh, Herb Thomas inherited the lead with for three laps before Buck Baker uh, would take the lead, and he would lead the next 79. But Thomas regained the lead on lap 150 and didn't look back until he claimed the checker flag on lap 200. Uh, Baker finished second, and Lee Petty was third. Uh, Fonny Flock was the only Flock brother in that race. He classified 12th with DNF overheating triples. The 1955 season began in High Point, North Carolina, at Tri-City Speedway in November 1954. But Palm Beach Speedway hosted the second race of the 1955 season on February 6, 1955. Quite the break in between races there. So I guess it was technically the yearly opening race. I won't get into that, though. Uh, the race uh, would uh, be the last for NASCAR on the dirt at Palm Beach. Herb Thomas, yet again, was victorious. Jack Coquette was second, and Buck Baker third. NASCAR returned in 1955, but this time it was on December 11th, and this time it was the fourth race of the 1956 season. So remember, we've, we've talked about this before. Sometimes, you know, a season began the year prior. Um. The recently paved half-mile witness, you guessed it, Herb Thomas, go to Victory Lane for a fourth time in six trips to Palm Beach. He was pretty good at Palm Beach, whether it was dirt on asphalt. Uh, It was a clean sweep for Chevrolet that day uh, on the podium. Uh, Thomas uh, and second-place finisher Al Keller were both in 56 Chevrolets, and third-place finisher Billy Myers was in a 55 Chevrolet. Chocolate Myers' father, Bobby Myers, finished 10th that day. He was also in a 55 Chevrolet. Now, Chocolate's uncle uh, and Bobby's brother, Billy, uh, who I mentioned just before, uh, won the seventh and final trip for the NASCAR Grand National Division on March 4th, 1956, uh, which served as the seventh of 56 races in the 1956 season. Jim Reed, uh, Jim Reed led a race-high 109 laps but suffered a tire failure, relegating him to 21st place finish among 30 starters, which was the highest field for uh, car count for a race at Palm Beach uh, for NASCAR. Myers took the lead with 59 to go in a 56 Mercury. Buck Baker was second and Herb Thomas was third. Again, pretty good at this place. Uh, the win was Myers' first NASCAR Grand National victory. He would go on to win once more at Norfolk Speedway in Virginia later that season. Um, at around that time, a NASCAR's final uh, trip to Palm Beach the South Florida Fairgrounds Corporation purchased the track and renamed it Palm Beach Fairgrounds Speedway, operating weekly races uh, for for uh, each year for years to come. Uh, the track was recognized as uh, was also recognized as South Florida Fairgrounds Speedway. It would continue to operate through 1983 when it was closed and demolished in the years that followed. In 1986, IMSA came to Palm Beach with a street race in downtown Palm Beach. 
But in 1998, the, the race was reloaded, relocated west to where the fairgrounds is, and parts of the 1.6 temporary mile circuit uh, traversed the grounds that Palm Beach Speedway once stood. Today, an amphitheater and new fairgrounds buildings and a car lot occupy where the Speedway once stood. The Barrett-Jackson Palm Beach auction is held at this location. There's also a pretty cool Facebook page dedicated to the Speedway. I encourage you to go check it out. It's all got some great uh, pictures. Just about posted actually every day. I ha had to quit looking because I'm like I'm not making enough progress on, on days here. It's just a lot of pictures. I think there was a recent driver who passed away who raced there. So the, the Facebook page is pretty flooded with his pictures there. Um, racing reference to history of American Speedway's past and present lost dirt tracks on Instagram and the Palm Beach Fairgrounds Speedway Facebook page helped with today's feature rollers featured racetrack. All right, Rob, anything to say there before we get into what's in the windshield in our that closing was really segment for the first um, show of the year? I didn't year? know that there was another Palm Beach Speedway. I was thinking of the road course Palm Beach International Raceway, but this was different. So this was actually kind of cool. So this was pretty interesting to learn about. So thank you. No problemo. So what's in the windshield? The Formula One World Championship will now begin on March 28th in Bahrain, which Bear also could potentially the outer have a doubleheader uh, there. Right. Uh, that's if Portugal can't happen. Is That's the rumor to be the replacement race for Vietnam. No confirmation on that yet. It's kind of worrisome that nothing has happened with that. Uh, the Australian Grand Prix is uh, delayed until the 21st of November. The Chinese Grand Prix has been postponed and potentially canceled and replaced by Imola. Uh, that will be on April 18th, which will now be the season's second race. So quite the gap between races here, which is why Bahrain could have two races. Um, and the third race, again, like I mentioned, is still TBA. That's scheduled, slated for May 2nd. The 2021 NTT IndyCar Series calendar has changed, and now we begin at Barbara Motorsports Park on April 18th, followed by the Streets of St. Petersburg on April 25th. As we record this podcast, the Arkham Menard Series East is beginning their season at New Smyrna oh, Speedway, the another, it was a you know, another Florida track there. Uh, oh, I retweeted it. Go check it out. It I didn't see the finish. finish. Who won? I won't spoil the winner, but it was red. I don't even know who the winner, the winner was. Here? I have we to look it up. Okay. Hold on. Go on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Give me a minute. Let me pull up my Twitter page. I just retweeted it. I gotta look something. I couldn't remember who it was. It's a it's a driver I'm not familiar with, so that's why I gotta let's see. Max Gutierrez. That's why I didn't know who it was. One in a three wide finish. Oh, who's he driving? I don't know. Who's he driving He's in for? Car number thirty. He's a four. It's a Ford. Okay, well, Max Gutierrez is the winner of that race. That it finished like just a, finished as like we recorded hour, like as we were recording this part, like when we started recording. So, oh, okay, okay. Well, there you go. Um, the Arkham and Art series, like I said, they they began. Max Gutierrez is the winner of that. That's the first of eight races in the 2021 season. Its Western counterpart will pick off uh, kick off its season on March 12th at Phoenix Raceway. And as we've said before here. NASCAR begins its uh, big series uh, series seasons this weekend. The clash is tomorrow. It's night February is really 9th on this. the road it, course uh, for reasons you know, that we've this discussed, before. which I still think are dumb. The road course should, shouldn't be on the road course. It should be on the oval, but whatever. There's that. Uh, Arkham and Art Series begins on February 13th. The Truck Series will begin on February 12th. And... Uh, and the Xfinity Series also begins on the 13th in the Cup Series. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, honey. I'm going racing. Or I'm going to go uh, We're getting, actually, uh, uh, lunch before gotta love the it race. When so I, have to, I have to get lunch before the race. Or I, don't, I still don't know where we're going. Do it. But we're going to go get lunch before the race. I get She's letting me watch the race. So that's Enjoy. what I'm, I'm, I'm excited about. There you go. There you go. Great fiance you have there. Very great, great. great. All right, so that's what's in the windshield here, and I'll see the Daytona Road Course for the top uh, three divisions there the following week, and then Homestead after that, uh, except the trucks are no longer going to Homestead, I think. Anyways, I forget that. Closing here, so social media, we've upped it this year. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Facebook? Robin Roller. You can also find us on YouTube. Yeah, got a Facebook, yep. That you can find us on YouTube, and uh, we'll be posting this podcast there as well. And we're and I'm in the process of re-uploading. Thanks to Rob sharing the files, which was a massive task. How many? How many? How him. many gigabytes <laughs> did I have to transfer that out, over my internet connection onto yours? <laughs> how 
I was, I was, it was a lot. I, I keep all of the raw footage files, lot. and then I keep all of the compressed files, and I was trying to get you the compressed files, and it was just a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. It's a lot, folks. It's a lot of memory to create these podcasts, but we do it for you. And uh, I, like I said, I'm in the process of re-uploading past podcasts onto the onto YouTube. And as and when we get done with this, he will send me a file of this podcast, and I'll upload that one as well and get in, in those. This will co- probably come out a day or two after the like actual podcast gets released, but it will get up on there. Uh, just stay tuned for that one. On YouTube, just search Racing with Robin Roller to find us. Our Twitters, though, the best way to get in contact with us and uh, for us to share news yeah, and the augment the news there. Rob is rpeters33. That's R-P-E-E-T-E-R-S-3-3. I'm at roller underscore zero one. That's R-O-L-L-E-R underscore zero one. Thank you for listening. Long show to kick off the season. A uh, lot to talk about, though. Uh, if you're new, hope you enjoyed. Hope you come back. If uh, you're returning, glad to have you back as well. We're excited for another season of doing this and talking about all things NASCAR and Car Formula One and some more of that. Thanks for listening. For Robert Peters, I'm Josh Roller. This was the Racing with Robin Roller podcast. Have a great Daytona week, everybody. Yeah.